Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Shrimad Bhagavatam playlist from Exotic Astrology. Today we are here with the 15th verse from the first chapter, first canto and let us start again. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya so many of you told me that this uh, the translation and purports are not visible so you want to see them also so sometimes i will be doing screen recording like this all right so let us recite the shloka yad anudhyasina yuktaha karma granthi nibandhanam chindanti kovindastasya kona kuryat katharatim The word Rati is very important here. It's attention. Alright, the translation is With sword in hand, intelligent man cut through the binding knots of reactionary work. Karma. By remembering the personality of Godhead. Therefore, who will not pay attention to his message? The purport. The contact of the spiritual spark with material elements creates a knot which must be cut if one wants to be liberated from the actions and reactions of fruity work. Liberation means freedom from the cycle of reactionary work. The li this liberation automatically follows for one who constantly remembers the transcendental pastimes of the personality of Godhead. This is because all the activities of the Supreme Lord, His Leela, are transcendental to the modes of the material energy. They are all attractive spiritual activities and therefore constant association with the spiritual activities of the Supreme Lord gradually spiritualizes the conditioned soul and ultimately severs the knot of material bondage. So this basically means if you see, if you read this, it's mentioned that the contact of the spiritual spark with material elements creates a knot. So, how do you define a knot? Knot is defined as a, fas a fastening made by looping a piece of string rope. Alright, so that is what is a knot. It is like in Hindi we say uh, gat. Because the soul identifies with matter, so therefore the, the soul starts thinking that oh this is my body this is my father my mother my husband my wife my children and then the soul gets attached so liberation means freedom from the cycle of reactionary work so liberation moksha mukti is referring to this that you do not get bound by reactionary work anymore so how does that happen when we remember the pastimes of Lord Vishnu, Krishna, Ram, then this happens. Because why, why, why this happens? Because they are all attractive and they are transcendental to the modes. That means they are beyond the three modes of material nature, Sattva, Raja and Tama. It is not between, it is uh, beyond actually. Okay? Vishuddha Sattva as they say. They are all attractive spiritual activities. So, constantly when we associate with the spiritual activity, so therefore in India this tradition of uh, discussing Ramayana and Mahabharat, Shiva Bhagavatam is still alive somehow. So, by listening to these great scriptures, we can get freedom from the knot of material existence because they will remind us of our spiritual life they will remind us of our spiritual identity they will remind us of our spiritual glory all right now liberation from material bondage is therefore a byproduct of devotional service very important statement attainment of spiritual knowledge is not sufficient to ensure liberation such knowledge must be overcoated with devotional service so that ultimately the devotional service alone predominates then liberation is made possible. Even the reactionary work of the fruitive workers can lead one to liberation when it is coated with devotional service. Karma overcoated with devotional service is called karma yoga. Similarly, empirical knowledge overcoated with devotional service is called jnana yoga. But pure bhakti yoga is independent of such karma and jnana because it alone cannot 
and no one will live. it it alone cannot because uh, karma and jnana basically it's saying that bhakti yoga is independent of such karma and jnana because it alone cannot endow one liberation from conditioned life but also award one transcendental loving service of the god of god of the lord so this means that when we do uh, so here karma yoga is stressed okay so karma yoga means basically doing the activities which we do like we go to the office we maintain our family we maintain our body but by remembering god and by offering the fruits of the results to god okay and similarly gyan yoga means we study the scriptures but with the attitude of doing it as a service to god not that we are just studying to show of others how much more we know of course karma yoga gyan yoga these are very detailed topics we cannot discuss them in this video but here the importance of bhakti yoga is stressed the word bhakti yoga is translated here as devotional service bhakti yoga means uh, trying to connect to god emotionally just like we do with uh, normal human beings surrendering to god basically but pure bhakti yoga is independent of such karma and jnana because it own, it it alone can not endow one with liberation from conditional life which means bhakti yoga also awards liberation from conditional life along with it awards transcendental loving service of the lord so there are nine processes of bhakti yoga devotional service which we will discuss uh, very soon of course hopefully shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam and pralad maharaj says that shloka in the seventh canto it's very far but we will discuss about it therefore any sensible man who is above the average man with a poor fund of intelligence with a poor fund of knowledge must constantly remember the personality of godhead by hearing about him by glorifying him by remembering him and by worshiping him always without cessation this is coming from that same shloka which i just told you shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam that is the perfect way of devotional service the goswamis of vrindavan who are authorized by shri chaitanya mahaprabhu to preach the bhakti cult rigidly followed this rule and made immense literatures of transcendental science for our benefit they have chalked out ways for all classes of men in terms of the different castes and orders of life in pursuance of the teachings of shrimad bhagavatam and similar other authoritative scriptures so any sane man should always be remembering constantly the personality of god it like how do you do that when you read scriptures like the ramayana the mahabharata you know, when you read shrimad bhagavatam then you will know how what god did and when he did to whom he did how he reciprocated with uh, the other great souls his devotees like bhishma like arjuna like uh, like ambarish like chitraketu like vitrasura so many great personalities like dhruva maharaj uh, like the prachetas so when we read all these then we shall come to know uh, that we actually have a very deep connection with him okay so we should hear about him glorify him remember him and worship him always so these four things are mentioned hmm? hearing is shravanam then glorifying is kirtanam remembering is mananam and worshiping is vandanam okay one of the these are the four among the nine processes of devotional service so it is just like you can think a man and a woman how do they get attracted to each other first they will see each other then they will hear each other then they will praise each other okay and then they start you know worshiping each other you know man will give a rose and the girl will dress nicely for him and you know, the the girl can sometimes cook for him and the man can sometimes give her a uh, very nice uh, gifts and you know, they they are actually worshiping each other like that they are trying to please each other they are trying to make each other happy because they are in love with each other or they are attached to each other okay so the same this is the same principle you see hearing about him glorifying him remembering him a man and a woman are constantly absorbed in thoughts of each other when they are obsessed and by worshiping him without cessation that is the perfect way of devotional service 
and here it is mentioned about the uh, Goswami is of Vrindavan. So there, so Vrindavan is a very holy place uh, for the Westerners who are not aware of Vrindavan. It is where Lord Krishna had uh, performed his childhood pastimes uh, when he was born in Mathura and then he was taken to Vrindavan by his father uh, Vasudev and handed over to um, Mother Yashoda and um, Nanda Maharaj of course. And even today there are a lot of sadhus and great personalities in Vrindavan who are spreading uh, spiritual knowledge and the Goswamis of Vrindavan who were authorized by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So there are uh, many Goswamis in Vrindavan, primarily six Goswamis. Rup Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, then Raghunath Das Goswami and there are others also. We, we will discuss about them later. And these great personalities, they had rigidly followed these rules, which means what are the rules? They were constantly hearing about him, glorifying him, remembering him and worshipping him without cessation, without any end. Okay, the fact or process of ending or being brought to the to an end so without without ending they would constantly hear glorify remember and worship him all right and immense and and made immense literatures of transcendental science for our benefit okay so they had written so many scriptures especially jeeva goswami one of the six goswamis I uh, have, have written, uh, uh, it is known as the Tattva Sandarbhas. Okay, very beautiful. They have chalked out ways for all classes of men in terms of different castes and orders of life in pursuance of the teachings of the Srimad Bhagavatam and similarly other authoritative scriptures. So there is another very beautiful book which is written. It's, it's known as Hari Nam Amrit Vyakaran. Okay, so it's a book which teaches grammar. Uh, but uh, it teaches grammar like this. So generally, uh, when we learn, learn English, they say na, A for apple, B for banana, C for cat, D for donkey. <laughs> but uh, this Hari Namamrit Vyakaran says everything. You know, with A, they will use one name of Vishnu, you know, Adhokshaja, for example. You know. Then with A, they will use another name. Okay, so O, A, K, K, like this, they will start and with every word, with every grammar, there is a name of Lord Vishnu associated with it. That is why it is known as Hari Nam, Namamrit, the nectar of the holy name. Vyakaran, Vyakaran means it is a book of grammar or you know, deep uh, literary uh, sciences, of course. Okay, So it is that grammar book which is filled with the nectar of the holy name, Hari Namamrit Vyakaran. So this book was also written and this is an amazing book. So... Anybody can go through all this. So it is said here that all classes of men in terms of different castes and orders of life in pursuance of teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam and similar other authoritative scriptures. So basically this refers to you know, different classes of men like um, somebody is a Brahmana and they can also read these scriptures. Somebody is an astrologer, they can also read and they can also understand about astrology, they can understand about the planets, they can understand about the origin of everything. Then if somebody is a Chatriya, like Yudhishthi Maharaj, he is a ruler, then he can also read, he can also understand how to become a better king, how to become a better Chatriya, okay. So, these are different ways by which uh, we can understand how we should improve our life irrespective of our position in the society, okay? And irrespective of what we are doing, for each and every person almost, there, there are certain things which we can learn and imbibe in our life and take inspiration from to elevate our consciousness. Alright, so this is a very beautiful verse which talked of Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga and Bhakti Yoga. Okay, how, how Bhakti Yoga is uh, very powerful in, or in offering us liberation from conditioned life and also awarding Bhakti which is transcendental loving service of the Lord. Okay. And then we saw in the beginning how the uh, how remembering the personality of Godhead, Lord Vishnu, can award us liberation. Liberation automatically follows for one who constantly remembers the transcendental pastimes of the personality of Godhead. 
all right thank you very much and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me regarding your horoscope then you can always go to my website down in the description section of my videos god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him thank you very much